It's spooky season, so I thought of no better time than the present to do a run representative of all these ghastly haunts. With so many mischievous specters to collect and train, this could be one heck of a party. So take a seat, grab a synesty, swing from a chandelier, and don't forget to blow out the Litwish before bed, because this is Pokemon Infinite Fusion the fan game with over 175,000 different Pokemon combinations. And we're here today to see if we can beat a hardcore Nuzlocke using only ghost types. That means if a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead. The next leader's ace is our level cap. No active items can be used in battle, and we're gonna be playing on set mode. If you're a returning viewer, please make sure that you're subbed to the channel. Over 75% of you aren't, and it would really go a long way to making these videos reach a wider audience. And if you're new here, welcome. You should also uh, sub. As always, when we do these runs, we're gonna be playing on modern mode, which widens our pool of available Pokemon, changes up the leader types, and overall is quite a bit harder than classic mode. Additionally, we're gonna be starting the game off with every non-legendary ghost type in Infinite Fusion. A lot of the ghost types in this game, at least at the time of this recording, are from Gen 5, which means that we have to go kind of a while before we reach our final forms. And with a major weakness to Dark, this is gonna be a tough one. Starting off in Professor Oak's lab, I like to take Charmander as our starter, and let's get to catch it. Grabbing a handful of friends, it's time for us to face off against Rando on Route 22. Fusing Fleshling with your mask, we get the very cool Delay. Up next is Charmander and Litwick, and I really love this line. Over on Route 22, we find Rando wearing a flannel shirt, speaking to the lead guard in a really gruff voice. He addresses us as, Sammy! And talks about how it's time to bust some ghosts, and the battle begins. Starting off with his Shinx, our Litmander does some pretty good damage with an Ember. And we manage to grab the burn as well. And the next one takes it down. His ace, Eevee, comes in, and after a few more rounds of fire flinging, Rando summons a 66 Chevy Impala and roars off into the distance. Before facing off against Brock, we catch a Sandile, fusing it with Ghastly. And while I do try to change up the fusions that I've run in the past, I love this one so much. Now it's time for us to face off against Brock and his Steel-type Pokemon, as he leads off with his regular, ordinary duck. Going for an Ember, we get him down just below half, as a Mud Slap does about 15% to us. Following up, we miss taking another hit from the duck. However, on the following turn, we managed to take it down. Brock sends in his ace, Steve Jr., and an ember does about 30%, and we manage to get the burn off. Missing on the next round, he just starts tickling us, which is kind of inappropriate, but this does activate his berry. After using a full heal, which I honestly didn't even know Brock had, another two embers get him way down into the red as our berry gets activated as well. One final round finishes things off, and we earn our Boulder Badge. Outside of Mount Moon, we run into Nurse Joy tending to this wounded Geodude. The smell of minerals and women in uniform cause Brock to erupt from the earth to lend a helping hand. After flashing Joy and Geodude with a steely gaze, it makes a full recovery, and Joy needs to go back to the Pokemon Center before she faints. And we leave. Fighting our way through Mount Moon, we grab a Clefron, and then evolve our Litmander into a Litmelian. And Yaling into your Ender. We also buy a fish off a guy, but we did that off screen because it was such a good deal. At the end of Mount Moon, we find Team Rocket attempting a triple fusion. After the machine explodes, the three rocket starters evolve into some kind of weird purple goo. And it turns out, that's actually how Grimers are made. Upset because Giovanni already has three Grimers at home, he and the rest of Team Rocket leave without cleaning up any of their stuff. Rude. After catching a dragonfly, we shove this big fish into a haunted rock, and we go and see Rando, who's off in the distance. This time when he greets us, he blinks, revealing that his eyes are actually completely black. And I let him know that he shouldn't be driving that Impala with those eyes that dilated. He says something about Rando not being home right now, and the battle begins. Totnik starts things off with a stun spore, but one shot from our candle, and this kitty cat goes to bed. Eevee comes in next, going for a side wave, as a paralysis prevents us from taking our turn. Another side wave does the <clears throat> same thing, so we swap into Garatum, taking another thunder wave. Once we do get to move, a crit bite grabs the Oko. Ninny yards out next, and a shadow sneak gets it down to about half. Getting knocked down to our berry with a faint attack, we heal up, and then manage to grab the KO on the following round. 
His final Pokemon is just his regular old fish. And after one more chomp, Rando erupts into ash and flame. On our way to Bill's house, we find this sheep made out of jello. And Bill is so frightened by our ghastly team of spectral haunters that he gives us some boat tickets so we leave him alone. With that, it's time for us to take on Misty and her ice Pokemon. Starting off with our Litmelian, we go ahead and stack up our evasion a bunch, taking some chip damage from the hail. After maxing out, a flame burst does massive damage to this bunny. Misty heals up once, and after another two hits, we take it down. Horace Manras comes in, and despite knowing that this thing has Bubble Beam, I stay in because, you know, what are the chances? My evasion is so high. After rolling a natural one, we barely get this thing down to half, and my starter gets taken down. Cool, 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 cool. With Garrett's out of Shadow Sneak does very little, activating her berry as she confuses us. At least her moves don't really do anything to us, and I continue to be my own worst enemy by smacking myself a bunch until we can finally bring down the big gal, earning our Cascade Badge. On our way over to Vermilion, we go ahead and catch a bunch of new friends so we can get ready for our fancy boat party. Then we fuse Igglybuff with Duskull, evolving into Depuff, and then all the way into Detuff. Then I reverse the fusion to get my normal typing back, but I kept this sprite because it's so excellent. Over on the SSM, we run into Rando, who's just downing like so many burgers. And he makes fun of us for having a salad, and our rival battle begins. Cottonuxio comes in, taking some pretty big damage from an ember, as he throws some leaves at us. After healing up, another Amber manages to get the burn, and he seeds us up to heal a little bit back. Ultimately, the next Amber grabs us to KO, and he sends in Ninyard. An Ember gets them down pretty low, all the way to his Sash, and after some chip damage from Leech Life and the Seed, we activate our own Berry, and grab the KO on the following turn. Slugbass is out third, so we go ahead and swap into Garatoon. Smog does just a little bit to us as the Shadow Sneak gets it way down into the red, activating his weak armor. And on the following turn, KO. With only Solovy remaining, we take a bit of damage going for a couple of bites, getting the KO, and the win. Now, it's time for us to face off against Surge in his fighting Pokemon, and this is where I realize just how difficult this run is going to be. He starts things off with Nose Key, and we send in our bird. Starting off with a will o -Wisp to break it sturdy, we then get stunned and then rocks tossed at us. Swar Sir swaps in a Coughloom as an ominous wind does a bit of damage and he sets up a double team. We manage to get the burn off and after being stunned for a turn, he heals back up. Ember only does about 20% with the second one doing even less. If it wasn't for the burn, we'd be in even worse shape as we can basically do nothing against this thing as Surge then goes ahead and uses his second potion healing back up again. Trying to get the Omni boost, I switch to more wins, managing to do some good damage, but I'm not getting any boosts. We roost back up just to let the burn do its thing until eventually Coughlin goes down. His ace Houndlade comes in, so I swap into Garatoon to cut its attack, and a bite still gets us well below half, activating our berry. Swapping into Wiggly Skull, he uses bulk up and then bites us, getting us way down. In a bad spot, we need to risk it and stay in, but he swaps out for some reason, allowing us to KO Nose Key. His ace comes back out, and our tough puff goes down. Now, none of my Pokemon are faster than this thing, but I send in Garatoon to lower its attack some more, and we manage to hold on with 13 HP, and why did I use Confuse Ray? Swapping in to get Ender, he smacks himself, but really, what was I thinking here? And I go down on the next round. Down to just three HP, a Shadow Sneak doesn't get the KO. Oh my God, he hit himself. And our journey continues. On our way over to Lavender Town, there's a bunch of new friends we can meet and undead later on. Before facing off against Rando in Pokemon Tower, we fuse Scyther up with Mimikyu, and this little marionette is so neat. Next, Shedinja and Munchlax fuse in Evolve, and I thought the 100 plus HP stat was worth forsaking Wonder Guard, but you know, that's foreshadowing. 
In Pokemon Tower, we find Rando exiting one of the graves. He says he's seen hell, but a strange man in a raincoat pulled him back to Earth? Weird. The battle begins with this grass cat, and we send in our bug puppet. A wing attack gets it way down into the red as he slurps up a bit of health and then heals up. Another wing attack takes him deeper into the red, but after using his other potion, a couple more take it down. Out next is his Litzil, but even with Barry cutting my attack down, one faint attack, more than enough. Out there is Axe gone in, same thing here baby, one and done, and for this little fishy, and his Eevee, awesome. Heading back to Celadon, we find Rando again, this time with a strange dagger made of bone. He's attacking these two rocket grunts, and he's going for the kill. No, Rando, they're human. Us calling out to him gives Rando pause, and the grunts return to their base. He can't believe the monster that he's become since his return from hell, and he rushes off. And is that Detective Laster from Psych standing in the distance? Oh, wait, no, it's just Erica. While fighting our way through Team Rocket's base, we evolve our Gator into Han Rock. We eventually find Giovanni. He sneaks up behind us and whispers something sinister and sexy into our ears. And we feel a warm, firm Pokeball. <clears throat> the battle begins. Han swings out first, and I forgot to show it beforehand, but check out the neckbeard on this guy. Going for a brick break, we do about 25% as a swagger comes in confusing us. After smacking ourselves, another brick break does a lot better. And after we smack ourselves some more, we manage to grab the KO. Out next is Kekon, who goes down in one, which leads into Disdain, who I always forget, has a focus sash, and our king goes down. Setting in Hawn Rock, I try to call an attack, only for Geo to heal back up. Lucky for us, I managed to get a crit sucker punch on the following turn because otherwise, I am pretty sure this thing would have killed my entire team. Smear Guard comes in last, and a single crunch gets us the KO. Giovanni blasts off. With Team Rocket taken care of, it's time for us to face off against Erica and her bug Pokemon. Starting off with Galvanate, Snort Ninja, go tanks and rock slide like a boss. Going for a Rock Doom, we get it down to about half. After she heals up, we get it to about half again, and then U-turns out, leading into Roaster, who takes about 50%. Another Rock Tomb gets it down to about half, and this thing U-turns out again into Volcanics, who we get down to about 30% before popping her berry. Going for an Ice Beam, it brings us down just below half, but we're able to clean up her first two Pokemon, leaving us at just six HP. Swapping into Haunt Rock, we trade Sucker Punches and Rock Slides for a bit, but it's very apparent that we are going to lose this fight. So, I swap into Garatomb. Going for an Aqua Tail, we finish it off, and we secure our fourth batch. While on our way to face off against Koga, our little croc reaches his final awesome form in Genadile. And next, Clefable and Dowblade make this neat little cosmic set. With our party set, it's time for us to take on Koga and his Dark-type team. Like I was saying at the top of the video, we have a massive weakness to Dark. Koga starts off with the Weirion, but we all know it's a dirty Zoric trick. After a few trades back and forth, Koga uses his first potion, healing back up. A Night Slash after that gets it pretty low, but we're knocked down pretty low too, activating our berry. On the next turn, we manage to grab the KO. Out next is Hotchfire. It uses Thunder on us, getting us down to 17 HP. We smack it down deep into the red, prompting Koka to heal again, and we get it back down with another Brick Break. Swapping into Ganodile, a Drill Peck does okay damage to us, but we manage to take it out with a Crunch. Ab tops out third, and we go for a dig, doing okay damage to it. We go to swap and pursue does some pretty good damage to us, activating our berry, and we send in Garatoon. And then an Aqua Tail sneaky combo managed to take it down pretty quickly. Real Weirion comes in last, and after it poisons us, it only takes a few smacks to take this thing down, securing our soul badge. 
Over in Silphco, we find Randall laying waste to the place, insisting Giovanni is actually a demon named Crowley? And his voice is even gruffer, more gruff than it's ever been. His fully evolved grass cat comes in first, and we send in Mimither. It sets up a sub, which we promptly knock out, and on the following turn, it goes down. Out next is Litzil, and an Ice Beam does okay damage to us, but a faint attack, sneaky combo, get the KO. Fragon's out third, and an X Scissor does just about half, and a Rock Slide knocks us way down, even after we heal up from our berry. One more hit takes this thing down, and Rapurion comes in next. We get it like so low, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. Setting in Garatum, I'm not sure why I didn't sneak here, but we finish it off after we take way too much damage. Magtick is out now, and after a few trades back and forth, we're able to take it down. Finally, Niniard is out, and after a series of unfortunate misses, 90% my ass, we send in Genadile, who's able to take it down after we get knocked down to our berry. But we grab the KO, and it's time to take on Papa Geo. We find Giovanni making some sort of deal with the Sylph president when he turns to us, his eyes flicker red for but a moment. Rando proclaims that he knew he was a demon, grabbing the bone dagger he had from earlier, lunging at him with a pokeball on the other hand. The, du the double battle begins with the Sucker Punch bringing Aegeris down pretty deep into the red, popping its berry, and Whimsoray goes down. But it does manage to set up a Tailwind first. Going for a Crunch, Shadow Ball combo, we manage to bring the Ghost Sword down as Kekkon comes in. A Fire Blast from his Cigar Bird does okay damage to us, and an Ice Beam does some really great damage, and I totally forget this thing has Air Balloon. An EQ does some pretty big damage all around, and we need to swap. Sending in Storinja, I'm regretting so many decisions about my life, and Lampsil takes out Haunch Thing. Donzor and Magtic both come in as a Rock Slide does massive damage to our side of the field, with an EQ getting a double KO. We send in Garatum out for the Intimidate, but they both double down on spread moves, and I am really in a bad way here with this flinch. Another round of spread moves, and I'm way in the red, and miss. We swap into Cleft Blade as a Hyper Voice does some okay damage to Donzor, and EQ hits everyone on the field for a decent amount, and eventually Rapurion goes down, and I get flinched because well, of course I do. At this point, they've done more damage to each other than I've done, period, and Niniard takes out Donzor. A rock slide gets me way down into the red, but I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. But lucky for me, this dragon is slow, so we grab the KO and blast Team Rocket out of the building. Before taking on Erica, we go ahead and fuse Golark and Steelix, and this thing rules. It also looks like a reference to something. Please let me know. Now. It's time to take on Sabrina and her fairy Pokemon. Togetails starts this thing off doing some pretty big damage to us, but after stacking up three Dragon Dances, we take it and her next two Pokemon down in one hit. Clefix is her final Pokemon. And honestly, me having some time off from these runs, from being sick, has absolutely destroyed me. I always bring Will-O-Wisp here, but I didn't. Swapping into Cleft Blade, my plan here is to max out my attack, so after a few Brick Breaks, it just poisons me and starts to stall me out. Between Wishes and Cosmic Power, I literally cannot do anything to this thing. That's why I swap into Genadile, because I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Then, I swap into Steel Lurk, and I go for a Curse, remembering that I'm a ghost. I honestly think this is the only time However long Curse has been a move, that I've actually used it for this purpose. Eventually, the Curse damage is putting me at risk, so I swap into Garatum when she heals up. I also didn't realize she hadn't healed anything yet. I know I can't hit her, because then I'll die. So at this point, I just keep on swapping between my entire party and really start to have a little bit of an existential crisis. This run has been way harder than I anticipated, and I keep on making so many silly mistakes. But after we manage to get ourselves out of this jam, 
we're moving on to Blaine. Marsh badge in hand. Before that, however, we managed to grab a Dust Stone for our Cleft Blade because I forgot to do this before we fought against Sabrina. In this mode, Blaine's a Psychic Trainer and his Demon Ball Pit is his lead. Garatoom is looking to just stack and sweep, so we start stacking up dances, and this thing goes for gear shift. Hitting us with a massive Zen Headbutt. We do manage to take it down in one, and we also get Galchomp down in one as well. I always forget that Octator has a Sash, but once he heals up, it's a KO. Zykin? Zykin, you son of a gun. This is fine. Everything's fine. Ganondial comes in and he goes for Protect because it apparently wasn't fast enough already, but a Sucker Punch manages to save the day for us. Now, I am purposefully saving Miss Magius for Volcarona to be my ace against the Elite Four, so I am down to the final two Pokemon in my box. First, we fuse Swinub with Drifloom, and once we get all the way to his final form, this is one heck of a tank. Finally. We fused with Eevee with Rota, and this is a gigantic mistake. It looks like Rotom Wash. So in my brain, it is Rotom Wash. It is not Rotom Wash. We make our way over to Mount Ember where Giovanni has managed to not only capture, but fuse all three legendary birds together into one super bird. I often talk about how Zap Mokuno has kind of made a moot fight by Discharge, Rock Slide, etc. Well, what happens when all of your Pokemon lack those moves as Stab and they're slow? Well, this happens. Vapor Tomb comes in and Discharge does pretty well. That is until I get frozen. And remember that I'm weak to electricity because I'm not Rotom Watch. Knowing I can't do anything I stay in, I do manage to thaw, but ultimately get taken down. Swapping into Ganondile, I take out Moltres, but now I'm paralyzed. I should have stayed in for a clean swap, but I didn't. So Steeler comes in just to die. Clef Slash? I'm really not sure why I danced twice here. Twice? Really? And we're never gonna dance again. Just Swine, surely! Surely with Metamize you can evade. Foolish mortal, while I do manage to take down Articuno, it doesn't matter because Ganondile is low and paralyzed. And for literally the first time ever, my run is done on Zap Makuno. The boss that I have teased for 25 some odd runs now. This was a lot more difficult than I anticipated. Between PG3 and being sick, I am so out of practice. And that's two losses in a row. But don't worry, we'll be back. And once the new Pokemon are released into this game, we'll have even more happy haunts to work with. So if you've made it this far into the video and you haven't summed, what's going on? Hit that button. But with that, I'll catch you next time and we will have our victory. Stay up.